Greetings, folks! Dun man here, and today we are finally doing a proper deep dive into Alex's caves. I'm gonna be starting off with the magnetic caves. I'll basically be going in the same order as the cave compendium by Dr. Professor Alexander Caverns, PhD. Galena, it sounds like a Pokemon region, might actually be a Pokemon region, but more importantly, it's the rock that the magnetic caves are made out of. The stuff that you see all around you, that stuff is Galena. The giant glowing magnetic red and blue stuff that you see all around you, those are, let me get this right, Neodymium crystals. There we go, nailed it. There's two types, Scarlet and Azure. Scarlet Neodymium basically pulls stuff towards you while the Azure stuff pushes it away. Now as I was studying this compendium, at this point in time, the book warned me, to warn you guys, not to use iron tools while exploring this place. Because there's creatures down there that can snatch that stuff away from you using their weird magnetic powers. But using iron or netherite, those are metallic materials, boots can be pretty useful because you can use them to walk on walls basically. And upside down or at any other angles that you choose to. Another reason you might want to explore the magnetic caves is because of all the iron that's down there. There's loads more. And also, iron is more useful because of the crafting stuff that I'll talk about later in the video. There's also the Tesla bulbs, which we saw in the previous video, and they will damage you if you walk near them. They'll give you a little zap, and also they'll explode if you shoot them. The book says the caves can be shaped weirdly with floating bits here and there, and so it should be interesting to just kind of move around them. Getting back to that Galena stuff, Galena rocks are actually extremely, extremely useful. Not only can you craft them into bricks and slabs and stairs and all of the variety of different building blocks, but they can also be smelted down for a single iron nugget. Now that is a little bit of iron, but if you think about it, that's basically like a whole biome where cobblestone can be basically turned into iron. So if you just look at the sheer amount of the stuff that's around you, that is a lot of iron that you can acquire very easily. But now let's get to the actual magnets. Hey, I am here to tell you to subscribe. Please do it. Please? Please. <laughs> we are less than 3,000 subscribers from the big 10K. Come on, let's do it. If we can do it within this year, that would be nuts. That would be difficult, but that'd be nuts. So yeah, hit subscribe. The neodymium. I always want to say neodymium for some reason, but it's not. There's two M's. The neodymium can be crafted using just its raw stuff that you just mine out of the ground and three iron ingots and that will give you a neodymium ingot. Neodymium ingot, god damn it! The blue or the zor neodymium can be used for crafting levitating rails, which are pretty cool. You can ride on the minecart and you can be all floaty. The red stuff on the other hand, the scarlet neodymium, can be used to create seeking arrows or just homing arrows, which will just chase your target basically. Alright then, let's talk about the mobs. First of all, we have this big-headed freak called the Teletor. Now, you'll find the Teletors just chilling around the floors of these caves, but they are awful and aggro. If you go near one, it'll get mad and it'll start smacking you with a tool that floats above his head. That's what their main deal is. They'll just pick up a tool, it could be anything from a hoe to a friggin' enchanted iron sword, and just start smacking you with it. They also fly around while fighting you and kind of strafe, which is not good, but that's the challenge. <laughs> when slaying these guys will drop a bit of Azor Neodymium and also something called the Telecore. Make note of that, that's important, it will come back when I talk about the crafting stuff. The Magnetron is an interesting creature because the book actually gives us some lore about it. It was apparently created by some ancient peoples and was used for mining, but now this creature just kind of roams around actually rolls around on its central heart. But once you go poking around near this thing, it will start gathering up blocks using its magnetic abilities in order to form like a giant suit of armor. Also, make sure there are no anvils or sawmills around because those will be weaponized by this creature. Like some freaky Iron Man suit. And after you defeat this thing, tough ordeal, you will get the Heart of Iron, which is another important crafting thing. I hate bound droids, but in spite of that fact, they are in the mod. 
They walk upside down on the ceilings of the biome and use their weird like construction material heads to try and crush you when you least expect it. Thankfully after they do this attack they are left vulnerable so if you shoot them while they're doing this they will fall down and cower in fear and it's up to you to beat them up before they can get back up to the ceiling. They drop something called the heavyweight. Now slimes are a version of slimes that have adapted to this cave and basically they can float around a little bit and they can merge. When you kill them, they give you ferro slime balls. The snitch, I mean the noter. Now the noter is just an awful little creature, but it has a pretty cool drop. They cannot attack you on their own, so they just scan you and just like snitch on you. Just tell people that you're here in the cave. They just tell other more powerful creatures of your presence who then come and try to beat you up. But my god, is Noter Gizmo a cool thing? You'll, you'll see why it's so cool. Alright then, it's time for the crafting stuff. I hope you big brains are ready with your notebooks. From both kind of neodymium, magnets can be crafted like so. Now magnets can be used to polar push blocks up to 27 blocks. Now these blocks have to be metallic or have to be connected to metallic blocks via slime blocks. Now the range of the movement can be incremented by using neodymium ingots on the blocks themselves. Okay, remember the telecore that you got from Big Head? You can combine it with energized galena to create more tesla bulbs. But more importantly, if you get the core and a little bit of galena, and some ferro slime balls and some neodymium you can make a galena gauntlet which will basically give you the powers of big head you can put it on and you can use your magnetic powers to control tools far away magnetic tools like iron and netherite but that's that's the only two things <laughs> and you can basically chop down a tree smack someone with a sword shovel up some dirt from real far away basically whatever you want to do Ferro slime balls that we just used for the Galena Gauntlet can also be made into Metal Swarf. What? Metal Swarf? And apparently you're supposed to like put this stuff in potions. You can drink this? That's nuts. But you can. You can use it to make a potion of magnetizing, which will give you the ability to be controlled by magnets without having to wear magnetic armor. Okay, okay, now I try time to talk about the Noter's Drop. The Noter's Drop, which is the Noter Gizmo, can be combined with the Telecore and Azure Neodymium in order to create a holocoder. Now, holocoders are basically like little photographs. You go and click a mob with them and you come back to something called a hologram projector. A hologram projector is a hologram projector. And you input the holocoder and bang, you have like a holographic statue of whatever mob you clicked on. What's absolutely sick is that it works on Alex's Caves mobs, it works on Alex's Mobs mobs. And please update Ice and Fire so I can have a dragon hologram in my house. You can also use the Noter Gizmos to make magnetic lights. Which, why? You can have hologram, uh, whatever. If you want magnetic lights, you want magnetic lights. Who am I to say something about it? Nerd. Okay, now moving on to what is possibly the most useful feature from this biome. The heavyweight. Basically, the Boundroid's head can be used to create a magnetic quarry smasher. Okay, so I recorded stuff at different times and apparently the way the quarry works is you set its distance using magnetic lights. So they are useful and I am sorry for making fun of you. There's also something called the magnetic quarry and the smasher sits on top of that. So basically, to summarize, you get a magnetic quarry, you place it down. You place a bunch of lights around it to denote the area it's supposed to start mining and then you put a magnetic quarry smasher on top of the magnetic quarry. And then it'll just become like a giant machine that'll start digging out blocks. The blocks which get mined out get shot out from the top of the quarry where they can be collected. Also it says the quarry will only become dormant after there are no more blocks left to mine so I can only assume that it goes down to bedrock but I don't know I'll have to test that out sometime later. And last but not least, we have the resistor shield crafted from the Magnetron's Heart of Iron. Now this shield can be used either to pull mobs towards you or push them away. The way you toggle between this is just by shifting while using the shield. So yeah guys, that has been everything from the magnetic biome. The magnetic <laughs> the magnetic biome, the magnetic caves. Yeah. I didn't really have a script for this, I just kind of read through the book, the, the Cave Compendium by Dr. Professor Alexander Caverns, and just sort of was winging it. So yeah, I, I, you know what, 
I kind of make fun of these kind of tutorial videos, but I actually had fun making this. <laughs> so yeah, hit subscribe and actually, you know, I have a job for you guys. Let, tell me if any of you find any uh, any Easter eggs from Alex's caves, because I did uh, like one of the first big videos on my channel was me talking about uh, Easter eggs from Alex's caves. So yeah, I want to do a similar kind of video for Alex's, I mean Alex's mobs. I want to do a similar kind of video for Alex's caves if there are any Easter eggs in this mod. So yeah. If you find any, let me know so that they end up in a video which will be out after all the tutorials and maybe like even like some other random miscellaneous stuff that I decide to do with this mod. So yeah, for now, I hope you've liked, I hope you've commented, and I hope you've subscribed. And for now, a goodbye.